Last time on just to see how far it is. Being out here in the wild makes you realize all you need are the essentials. Happy we're not camping tonight. It's been a hell of a long drive today, probably about 400 kilometers, five hours, gravel, a lot of straight tar road, and it's all worth it when you arrive at a place like this. It is spectacular. tired face one thing I haven't done on this trip is kayak I'm pretty good at it as well and um, when we arrived here uh, Paul was like no set up camp kind of and come to our place for sundowners and gin and tonic and then we're gonna bry and you know how that ends up one o'clock in the morning we finished came down to our campsite and had to set up the tent Record time, fastest we've done it. Uh, hot as all hell, like 30 degrees still. Um, and then woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning with <laughs> the sprinklers going off. We got drenched. So um, it's 6 o'clock now and I'm desperate for sleep, which I'm not going to get. So I must just put on my big boy panties and uh, go for a swim in the Orange River. Oh, I'll just lie down a bit more. Oh, I'm waiting for coffee. That doesn't work anymore. Hello, babies. What's happening? What's happening? A new day? A new adventure? Hey? Do you want to come up? What do you want? Do you want to come up? Hey? Oscar, you can't climb the ladder, boy. I know you're going to try, but you can't. Dad will come down. Come on, let Dad come down. Let Dad also not try and land on his head. Because there's a distinct possibility of that. Hello, my guys. Hello. Morning. 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 Morning, babies. Hello, Milamu. Hello. What's up? What's up? I know it's been a bit bleak in terms of catching waves but what has been amazing is getting wet in some really incredible farm dams and rivers and doesn't get bigger and better than the Orange River and just across the bank there a few k's up is Namibia so cool I think that view is incredible so if I carry on paddling up there behind me Ultimately, I'll find the sea. We had a long paddle. We woke up this morning. You have the fish eagle and the breeze blowing through the bulrushes. So, so calming. Yes, we live in a great place. Love South Africa.
I feel like I am on the set of The Martian. You couldn't find a more dramatic location than this. But as you see the sign behind me, Rimfuss Mark is just this way and apparently there's a hot spring as well. So we're gonna go and spring into a hot spring like you need to, just water here turns into steam. Crazy landscape, another first, wow. I have never been in a hot spring before and I was a little bit worried it's like 40 degrees outside and I thought the last thing I want to do is get into a 40 degree spring this one is a little bit cooler but the water running down here is, is hot it's like a shower Henry yes. you're the man you, you look after everything here at the hot springs yes Mari I make sure that these things are working everything is working and uh, also welcoming people when they arrive you are from Rimfasmark is that correct yeah, I'm from Rimpasmak. I was born here, but I, I, I was I was moved to, to Namibia during the apartheid time. And after 21 years, we we lived in Rimpasmako. Yeah. So we've been back to this lovely place. We started this thing and thought of some was the way to go. Because we had the hot springs, that's the only one in the, in the area. It's fascinating though, when you drive through here and you look at the landscape, the last thing you expect to find is water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, that's what makes this place so amazing. People come here and then, they, and, and then wow. Yeah. I love it. And I see you've got chalet, so that's all been set up so people can come and stay here now. Is yeah. it popular? Yeah, it's, it's very popular because we have um, air corn in it, so, and people can come right through the year. And we have also four by four trains, three of them, and we also have uh, camping for overnight. But it's amazing because I mean, this is part of our little journey. I didn't even know places like this existed. Uh, this is a, a, a hidden place. Yeah. No, 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 no people know about this place. And thanks to to Mr. Dupana, yeah. word of mouth. Yeah. yeah, that's how our, our, our place uh, is being uh, marketed. But. With the help from you guys, yeah, we can we can do lots of people. Here. When I asked people in the beginning of my journey places I should visit, they said Rimfasmark you've got to go to. And it's such a significant town. So it's been really cool to meet someone who was there, mm. who got moved in the bad mm -hmm. days and came back to the land. It's cool. Yeah. Nice yeah. story. Yeah, it's actually very cool, yeah. And and, and I think that move also makes uh, better people of us yeah because we've been moved and we've been moved there so we know how it was there in in, in Namibia and and now we, we can we, we're we back can, home we're back home and we can implement what we learn in, in, in Namibia because Namibia is also very lovely country okay Henry lucky to chat you I'm getting back in the spring uh, uh, enjoy it man it's, it's cool I might I might move in I actually invite you oh. <laughs> Like a life, eh? Yeah, yeah, you can get used to this. Thank you for introducing us to this. I mean, your valley is amazing. Ah, absolute pleasure. And you've been here for how long? Um, well, I was basically born here on, on the farm where we live now. My mother was still the teacher back then, so we stayed in town about 60 k's away. And then um, over weekends and holidays, uh, we would come to the farm. So, yeah, we were basically raised on the farm. We've all heard of Akrabis, but I don't think we realize, I mean, I didn't know for one that, like, this is a grape region. I thought maybe citrus, mm -hmm. but that's what you guys specialize in. Yeah, we, we are only doing table grapes, mostly seedless varieties, white, red and black. Uh, we have early season, mid season and late season. Lately also a lot of citrus plantings. So citrus is also doing really, really well in the area. Old mainstream business was the livestock. Um, now it's getting really tough with the drought. Um, some of the regions and some of the farmers in, the, in, the, in close proximity to us didn't have a drop of rain for the past seven years. Absolutely horrendous to see. The Orange River is the lifeblood of this region. Absolutely. If you if you take out the Orange River out of this region, it would be complete desert. It's literally, it's a 
four kilometer odd green patch of land all alongside the the orange so so yeah without the river um this whole economy everything you see here you know all the people who lives here are in some way dependent on the farming industry which is then also dependent on the river you and i were sitting and chatting last night export business is your is your stuff i mean we're not going to get to eat your grapes on our tables are we um well there's always you know the odd 10 percent that gets sold locally um but the really good ones uh, unfortunately <laughs> is being exported but yeah there's still a lot of good produce left uh, to be sold and to be bought at your local shop. All commercial farming, I guess, on this stage has become really technical. We are really using all of the, the support we can get. So being it satellites, being it drones, um, very dedicated and specialized irrigation systems uh, to manage the water usage. Um, we use satellite feeds that measures your chlorophyll content um, and by looking at that, we can identify uh, stress sections in patches of land. And, and yeah, it's uh, really all guns blazing and using everything at your disposal. I was trying to say the name of your farm. Say, say it for us, and, and the story is also amazing. Yeah, so um, this, this very spring where, where we are in now, it's uh, in the Mulapur riverbed. Uh, natural hot spring so the mouth of this spring is in the Orange River and the name of my farm is called Khamai. Is it so, Koi? Uh, it's Koi San yeah. and it means fountain in the stream so before we had all these big irrigation dams upstream um, in 1974 the river went to a complete standstill and the farm where I'm farming was the only farm west of the Ukrabis Falls that had a normal size crop and didn't have any uh, water restrictions at the time because they were pumping straight out of this very fountain. So where we're sitting right now, it runs all the way downstream and ends up at your farm? Yes, in the middle of the river and, and it's actually quite, quite nice to see in, in the winter when it's really cold. Now this pool is about 40 degrees you can see a circle of mist arising from the river. It's quite easy to spot in the morning. Unbelievable. Eh? So, so cool. And yeah, you bring us to this. That kind of makes a beautiful story. Yeah. It starts here and it ends at your farm. I love it. Well, day 21 certainly got off to an amazing start. Back to the base camp to grab some lunch and some downtime before freshening up in a shower that, well, was hotter than the hot spring. Our tour of Hamaip with Pole was going really well. That was until this hit us. absolutely out of nowhere um, you know the the northern cape is notorious for for a quick uh, couple of millimeters but uh, this is this is really uh, well, we, yeah we were talking and you're saying like people haven't seen rain for seven years and we saw the clouds we're thinking it's blowing to namibia yeah but then that windstorm hit us i've never in my life seen something blow through like that everything fine on the farm though because i see there are but things blown everywhere, metal sheets have been blown over. Yeah, I think uh, luckily most of the crops uh, will not be affected by us because it's still a long way to harvest. Uh, these blocks, uh, uh, it's debatable, uh, we'll, we'll see. They will split within three days. If they are fine within three days, then they'll be and okay for again. the market. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, that was actually... That was nuts. I mean, this morning I was making that joke about having a paddle on the Orange River. There were waves. I probably could have surfed. 
stupid. Should have taken the side awning down. I mean, there was a chance of rain maybe later this afternoon in three or four hours. Didn't even think. So rookie mistake on our part because that is absolutely trashed. But um, yeah, we just couldn't get back in time. We were so far away from, from where we were camped. I've never seen stuff like that. I mean, I grew up at the coast and, and maybe it's because you're kind of used to it. But yeah, we've been dealing with 40 degrees, like clear skies. Never saw it coming. Unbelievable. So look, I mean, that awning didn't stand a chance in a, in a wind like that. And I didn't have uh, much hope for our rooftop tent. But can I tell you what, front runner, you guys have built <laughs> something quite special. I don't know how it survived that. Look, I think it helped that we had all the flaps open because it was so hot. So obviously air could travel through it. But yeah, I'm just busy uh, putting everything back together again so it can dry out. Just checking everything is, is here, and it, it is an all silly one piece, amazing. It's like it never happened 20 minutes later, sun's out, birds are treating. <laughs> Crazy, wow. And just like that, our planned sundowner cruise on the Orange River was back on. Honestly, what a day. It's certainly one that I will not be forgetting in a hurry. After two awesome days at Blowpits, we were back on the road again in Susie. Our routing would take us back via Ring Fussmark. But with landscape like this, come on, who would be complaining? yourself questioning yourself well, I just had one of those moments now because we've actually really really been enjoying being on a tar road it's been so much gravel driving over the last 21 22 days whatever it's been so I'm quite used to the nice relaxed drive got to cannot put in some fuel and um, didn't even think that Pits on Avanta the ghost town would be on a gravel road and it made me question how badly do I want to go there but I want to go there it was on my original list right from the very beginning. I want to see what it's about, so pushing through perseverance.
honestly didn't know what to expect with uh, pits on a barter. We'd heard it's a ghost town, um, no one stays here. So when we drove in and we saw a setup that looks like it's not just overnight, we knew things are, are, are a little bit different. Blackie, yeah, play your son, eh? This is right, yeah. For how long now? No, the eight, 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 the En wat, wat doen jy so? Hoe kom pits onder water? Ek is een afgetreden mechanical engineer. So jy het hier gekom nou om een bykie te skryp? Een bykie te skryp en, en weg te haar op met Johannes vir jou. Was dit altyd die plan om pits onder water te kom? Jong, ek sê, seker, ek sê nou die dag vir die burger, vir die mense van die burger, hulle, hier was drie van hulle wat die onderhoud gehad het, en met jou sê, krille, ek het lang terug, seker so 38 jaar terug, toe gaan ek hier oor die spoor, Dus my kinders nog klein, my tweeling nog klein, dus nou graad 1. Toe kyk ek so, toe staan hier nog een stoom en een vier skoon maak en so. Dit is een prachtige stasie gewees hier die, die was grasperke hier buitenkant, die pad grasperke, dit was een van die mooiste stasies in die land. En uh, toe denk ek, jy sê, dit is nou een rustige stasiekie. En ek het nou, altyd pit sonder water in my kop. Ek was seker maar in een vorige leven hier gewees, ek ja. weet nie. Maar die mense sê dit spook hier so. Jy was nou en so... het jy iets gesien? Nee, nee, want ek het niks gesien nie. Ek het nie kom spook is. Ek het kom rustig verkeer. Ja. Maar jy het my gesê, dit is nie baie rustig nie. Dit is bezig, geen pit sonder water. Dit is bezig, hier kom baie mense soos jylle nou. Ja. Jy weet, ek sal nooit jylle mense geontmoet het, as ek nie hier was. Ja, ja. Jylle so hier voorbij gerei het en, en maar, maar ek sal nooit vir jylle gewoon moet het. So bizarre arriving in a place like this and you think about the lives that were here, the kids that were playing outside and the stories that obviously existed and it's been so fascinating meeting up with, with Blackie who has been here for seven months and, and obviously has picked up a bit of information on pits on water, but I'd love to chat to people that lived here for sure uh, and find out the history of the place because it must have been really, really beautiful. I mean, the farmhouses, you can have a look, I mean, obviously gone to rack and ruin, which is really sad. What would be great, you said the farmers kind of bought all this land. It'd be awesome if this was looked after and maintained so it doesn't become obsolete because I think people need to come to a place like pits on water. The thing for me, I'm tired. I'm like... Yo, this trip's been trip's been a bit intense and, and I was looking for a place I've put sort of water because there's no one here. And and that's what I need. I don't I, yeah, I don't want to make small talk. I don't want to I just I wanna be quiet. So I think I'm not gonna camp here tonight. Sad as it is, I think I'm gonna push on and find somewhere where it's just me. My ghost town. It was five o'clock by the time we finally got back on the road again and covering the 150 odd kilometers to Prisca, well it was clearly going to take a little longer than we anticipated. And with us losing light fast, it was time to find a place for supper. these for just situations like this one. Side of the road, change in plan, no more pits on a water. Haven't eaten since breakfast at 6.30 this bloody morning and we're heading to Preska, haven't figured out where we're staying yet but um, the dogs needed to be fed and so did I. So it's quite cool, quick and easy without these little gas burners, butane gas burners at least. So these noodles I get from the Chinese General Deal, different flavours, good spice. What's great, I don't need to whip out a knife and fork. Um, it comes with it all packed and ready to go. So it's actually quite a good meal when you're on the run. Obviously, I'd love to have my front runner awning out. But as you know, that got uh, poked in a crab is uh, yesterday.
So cool to wake up uh, and make a couple of new friends. The dogs certainly are. Um, but you know what the cool thing is? You know when you arrive at a place in the pitch dark and you set up, you've got no idea what you're going to wake up to. And this campsite we found by a complete default and purely out of desperation. But we've woken up to what has got to be probably one of the most picturesque campsites that we've been to. It is stunning. Under the trees and right on the banks of the Orange River. Beautiful. Come baby, bring it. Put it on. Go, go, go. <laughs> it's the only way to get the ball from her yeah. is to have two balls in play. Ready? Ready? Go, 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 go. Good girl. I'm sitting on the roof because I get better signal up here. And it's actually pretty tough. We, um, we were quite organized in the beginning of this trip in terms of knowing where we wanted to go, but also having a contact list together of places that are pet friendly. Um, and then I just ran out of time. So this last week or so, we've been en route pretty much, but I haven't, I haven't got a list of places. So like as we're going along, we're trying to find places that are pet friendly, and it's actually proving to be quite, quite difficult. And yeah, we don't always want to rock up and camp. Sometimes you just need to have a nice bath as well. So trying to find a place to stay either in Oranje or in Hope Town, um, not easy. Whenever I'm uh, packing up and getting ready to go, if you leave a door open, that's where you'll find Oscar. Petrified he's going to get left behind. Oscar boy, hello my boy, where you sleeping? Cutie pie, cutie pie. I must admit it smells pretty fresh in the car today and fresh in a good way because I just did a quick calculation the last time I actually had a, like an official shower with soap and um, was day 16 in Yellands Bay when we left for our wild bush camp and it's now day 23. It doesn't mean that I'm a dirty pig, it's just for me being in the water irrespective of where it is, if it's a river or a pool or a, a hot spring, that counts as a bath. So it hasn't I haven't been pogging, no, I mean the dogs couldn't really tell me if I was anyway. But it's quite cool, we're heading to Orania and I just saw now they've got their own currency called the Aura. So maybe I shouldn't have bathed because I've probably washed my Aura away so I'm going in there with a clean Aura. And I've put my coffee pants on as well so I should fit right in. Daryl, not, um, not what I expected from uh, from Orania. Do you get that a lot when people arrive here? Yes, we get that quite often. Lots of people don't know what we're about. They've never seen the place. They just hear the stories of about a white-only community. It, I think it, it's militant and... Oh, radical sometimes. Yeah. Radical. When they actually get here and they see the place, they realize we're just a bunch of friendly guys just living our own culture. That's very, very chill. I mean, and you haven't even been here that long. No, I've been here about... Two years and a month, two years and two months. From where? Wellington, down in the Western Cape. So why leave? I mean, everyone thinks the Western Cape's amazing. Why, why leave? Uh, to be honest, I didn't quite enjoy it there. It got a little bit too dangerous for me at one stage. And then I was actually on my way to visit some friends in Limpopo and we stopped here to visit other friends and I just kind of ended up staying. We were chatting to you earlier about crime and stuff. You're not worrying about that. I don't see electric fences. It must make a big difference to quality of life for you. Oh yes, oh yes, we spend a lot of the time with open doors here. We never lock our cars. Um, the fences you see around town are to keep the dogs in the yard, not to keep people out of the yard. I've, I've never seen a house actually with any burglar bars or anything on the windows. It's just not necessary. You've also heard about like the aura as your currency, but it's not, it's not really a currency. Have you, have you got notes? Yeah, yeah, let me show you quick. It's... I can't use it anywhere but yeah. No. Um, oh, there's one or two guys that'll help you out if you're in Oak Town or something yeah. and you have a couple of auras on you. Um, but basically, it's just a way to make our lives a little bit easier. Um, it's not a currency, it's a coupon system. Ah, okay. And valid for three years? Three years. We actually just started the new series. Um, this is now the G series. Yeah, but, but it makes sense, I understand. It's coupons. I mean, we go to a shopping mall and you buy gift vouchers. It, it, in theory, it works the same way. Could exactly. I, as a visitor coming in here, could I get Aura or would I have to be living here? No, no. Anyone, anyone can grab an Aura. Um, the one ATM in town that only gives auras. Oh, seriously? Yes, you can't, you can't draw rands there. 
What, what do you like most about living in Orania? The calm, to be honest. It's, it's, it's a lovely calm place to be. There's none of that rush, heavy pressure, no rat race. Yeah. It's, it's very peaceful around here. And the safety is my second biggest favorite thing about this. Kids walking from home to school, go visit their friends, go walk down to the swimming pool. I've, I've never seen that anywhere else in South Africa for a long, long time. That's cool, eh? But you know what, I don't know if that calm's going to be here for very long because it looks like the town's booming. Even driving through the town, you see there's everywhere there's building. Um, there where I live, in Klankerluk, that's a new developmental area there, I think five houses just sprung up in the last three months. Yeah. So we're I constantly think... growing. There's more people than houses. Oh, is it feel good here? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Promise. I promise. It's great food. Well, we'll find out I'm having a fat burger. Bacon and brie. Bacon and brie. Dude, the milkshake was bloody good. I think I sucked that thing down in 30 seconds and that was awesome. Look at the monster bloody burger. Luckily, I'm a pig, so I'm welcome in Oranya because this is this is a few, few close to my heart. I can't believe the size of it. Well, that was a very interesting visit. Um, Oranya was always on my list when I was putting together places I wanted to visit because I'd never been here before. Uh, and it wasn't for political reasons, it was purely out of curiosity because you hear so many different stories and I thought, let me rather come myself see for myself so I can figure it out and as is so often the case <laughs> the perceptions and the stories you hear are so far away from the truth talk about a dramatic arrival in the free state. But then the reality hits us as I found myself literally threading my way from pothole to pothole on what is one of the worst roads that I've ever driven on. Suddenly Yarrow was praying for gravel and corrugations. But not even this mess could upset my 23 day puncture free run on my grabbers. And on we pushed, another marathon day on the road. Another after dark arrival, but the promise of a few days off. Next time on Just To See How Far It Is. just headed out and found a nice place and thought hey that looks like a great spot for lunch this little road I drive past so often past Rip Dam so maybe I stop to take a quick photograph and, and off I go so cool just to take time out make a lunch I mean you can't get a restaurant with a better view than this this is the last place you expect to find a modern art gallery and a collection like this. Mapsa is something that is absolutely mind-blowing. Cheers, new Bethesda, amazing. Eh? <laughs>